Welcome wilderness explorers, it's Miss Gisa, and today we are at White Sands National Monument in New Mexico. White Sands National Monument is located in the Chihuahuan Desert. This desert is the largest and also coolest and wettest in North America. It has the largest prairie dog population. There are four deserts in the United States. We're in the Chihuahuan Desert, and if you watched my Death Valley and Joshua Tree episodes, you know that those national parks are in the Mojave Desert, and Saguaro National Park and Organ Pipe National Park are in the Sonoran Desert. The fourth desert in North America is the Great Basin Desert, which I haven't been to yet, but stay tuned. Now, before we go any further, let's discuss the word desert. Some people think a desert is covered by lots of sand, but not all deserts have sand. Land can be covered by broken rocks and stones or even snow and still be considered a desert. A desert is any place that is very dry and hardly rains. Many people do not realize that some deserts are hot and some are cold. Don't miss our other National Park adventures through different deserts. Do you know why we call this area a National Monument? National Monument and parks are protected places that are set aside to be preserved so that everyone now and in the future will be able to enjoy and learn from them. Each park and monument is unique and teaches us about either an important habitat, an important historical event that took place there, or the history of people who lived there long ago. The national park system includes monuments, battlefields, seashores, wetlands, scenic rivers, and urban parks. It's up to each one of us to do our part to save and preserve these wonderful parks, home to important plants, animals, and history. Before visiting a national park, or any new place, I like to read books about where I'm going. You can get these books from the library, or I've also put the links below. Let's go over some of the special books that I've picked out to prepare you for a visit to White Sands. Now, my favorite book for White Sands National Monument is called White Sands, and it's written by Lizzie Hillier and illustrated by Amelia Ohala. Now, be sure to stay tuned because I have an interview with the author of this book, Lizzie, who also happens to work here at White Sands. Other books that you can read before coming to White Sands to prepare are National Parks of the USA, which has a small section on White Sands, Baggy Explores White Sands, and Puffy Coyote. If you're a little older, like a teenager or an adult, you can read White Sands National Monument by Rose Houck. Now, let's go to the Visitor Center. You'll want to stop in at the Visitor Center to grab a park map, gather information about the park and its programs, and grab a Junior Ranger booklet. And don't forget, you'll need a saucer to slide down the sand dunes. Not really sand dunes, gypsum dunes, but we'll talk about that later. The Visitor's Center is an adobe building. Adobe is the name for a style of building construction that uses bricks made from mud. This building is modeled after the Pueblos and Spanish missions in early New Mexico as an example of Pueblo Revival architecture. The Junior Ranger Program is a very educational program that teaches children and their parents all about the animals, plants, and history of the park. It also teaches children how they can take care of the park and teach others to do the same. The more people know how special White Sands National Monument and all of our national parks and monuments are, the more people there will be to take care of them and enjoy them responsibly in the future. It is my favorite thing to do at each of the national parks. Be sure to have your hat, a canteen full of water, sunscreen, along with your Junior Ranger booklet and park map, and your saucer before heading out to explore. touch this to see what it feels like. Oh, it's so cool. Oh, it's very cool in temperature and it feels softer than sand by the ocean. It almost feels a little bit like, like flour 
with a, that's moist. The stuff on the ground is actually not sand, but gypsum. We're at the biggest gypsum dune field on Earth. Gypsum usually dissolves in water, but because the climate is so dry here at White Sands, the grains have been preserved. How did all this gypsum get here? Well, about 250 million years ago, life was much different. Gypsum mineral could be found in the Permian Sea. Millions of years after that, the Earth's tectonic plates started to shift and collide. The water rose and fell, and the gypsum was pushed up in the mountains that you see today. Approximately 10,000 years ago, the gypsum was dissolved by rain and snow from the mountains and got washed down into a lake. Once the water evaporated, it left the gypsum in the form of selenite crystals. The wind and water broke down pieces of the crystals into smaller particles. These particles were blown by the wind across the basin into the very dune field I'm standing on. Now, let's go sledding. You can buy a saucer to slide down the dunes in the visitor center or at a nearby sporting goods store. Remember to wax the bottom of the saucer. You can use a candle. This makes the saucer go a bit faster. Some of the best sledding dunes are between mile marker four and six. Choose a dune with a gently sloping face and a level runoff at the end so that you can come to a halt safely. Be aware of where the dune slopes meet the desert floor. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. about a plant that you're gonna see here amongst all this gypsum. These plants are called soap tree yuccas. It's one of the four common plants that grow in these dunes. The soap tree yucca is able to grow through the dunes even as the dunes move. Soap tree yucca can stay above the sand dunes because of the stem elongation. This unique plant stem grows longer when it feels it is smothered by a dune. It grows quickly to keep its head from being buried by the gypsum. Did you know Every part of the soap tree yucca can be used. That's right, these white flowers can be eaten. The flower stalks can be used as walking sticks. The bayonet leaves are sharp and pointy, so the tips can be used as needles. The seeds produced by the yucca provide food for mice and other rodents that live here. People can also use the seeds to make black dye. The taproot helps keep the soap tree yucca alive and can be used like a potato, as long as you take off the toxic skin before eating it. Do you have a guess? as to how this plant is pollinated. Yucca plants are pollinated by the yucca moth. The moths camouflage with the flower, so they are hard to spot. Another very interesting thing about this area at White Sands National Monument is that fossilized footprints of dire wolves, ancient camels, mammoths, smilodons, and giant sloths were found here and are hidden beneath this gypsum sand. Here we are at the Interdune Boardwalk, which is about 2,000 feet. You can walk on the boardwalk and look at the exhibits along the way. These exhibits will teach you about the science of the dunes, including the animals that live here. If you're looking for a more strenuous trail, you can hike the backcountry camping trail, which is about two miles and will take you an hour and a half to complete. This trail goes through the heart of the dunes and will require you to climb over some steep dunes and loose sand. Be prepared because you will find no water, toilets, or shade along this trail. The Alkali Flat Trail is a longer and more strenuous hike at about five miles. The Alkali Trail is not flat, so be prepared to hike up and down the dunes the entire way. There are also no toilets, water, or shade, so you must be prepared if you choose to do this hike. It will take approximately three hours to complete. White Sands is home to more than 800 different animals, many of them nocturnal. The plants and animals 
have adapted to this harsh environment with very little surface water and highly mineralized groundwater. The animals that live in white sands stay underground to conserve water and avoid the extreme heat. They come out at night searching for food. Some of the animals that you will find here include the barn swallow arrives at White Sands National Monument after spending the winter hunting for insects in Central and South America. Barn swallows have slender bodies, long narrow pointed wings, and forked tails. Hummingbirds, which are the only birds that can fly forwards, backwards, up, down, and sideways, and can also hover. Their wings can flap 80 times per second. They eat tiny insects and nectar from plants. The Chihuahuan raven is often mistaken for the crow. Ravens have completely black feathers except for a few white feathers on their neck, only seen when they fluff themselves or the wind ruffles their feathers. Chihuahuan ravens are omnivores, both plant and animal eaters, and eat just about anything they find or catch, including seeds, leaves, insects, bird eggs, lizards, small mammals, young birds, or carrion. Burrowing owls nest in burrows on the ground. These owls are unique because most birds make their nests up high in trees or buildings. Burrowing owls are small and live on the ground. They usually weigh half a pound. They eat rodents, rabbits, bats, grasshoppers, and beetles. The roadrunner is New Mexico state bird. Roadrunners prefer running to flying. They can run up to 15 miles per hour. They can also fly to and from elevated perches. While they will drink water, they usually get enough water from the small animals they eat. They use their long, sharp beak, like a spear, to catch lizards, snakes, and rodents. Roadrunners have a long tail and a short, ragged crest. Red-tailed hawks are named for their rust-colored tail feathers. They are seen in many parts of North America. Red-tailed hawks eat small mammals and reptiles. If you've watched my episode on Death Valley National Park and Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge, then you know my fascination with the pupfish found right in the middle of Death Valley Desert and nowhere else on Earth. Well, the White Sands pupfish lives here in White Sands. This pupfish is endemic and only found here. The White Sands pupfish, like the different pupfish species in Death Valley, are threatened or endangered and therefore protected by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as well as the national parks. You can find white sands pupfish in the Lost River. Another endemic species is the Protocygia white sand census. This was the first moth species new to science found at White Sands National Monument in 2007. It lives no other place on earth, but right here. There are many more moth species found only here at White Sands. Apache pocket mice and kangaroo rats forage for seeds at night. Pocket mice can go for months without water because their kidneys are highly efficient. Kangaroo rats don't need to drink. That is because they use water stored in the seeds they eat. Kangaroo rats can jump up to 10 feet high if scared. Jackrabbits can be found where the dunes meet the desert at White Sands National Monument. They can run up to 40 miles per hour. Jackrabbits have to watch out for coyotes which like to eat them. Badgers are nocturnal animals. They live along the outer edges of the dune field where there is more vegetation. They have a great sense of smell, which is how they find their prey. Badgers eat reptiles, insects, and rodents. Coyotes and bobcats hunt at night when it's cooler. They like to eat small rodents, but will also eat ground nesting birds and insects. Porcupines at White Sands live at the edges of the dune field in highly vegetated areas. Did you know that porcupines are the only North American animals with antibiotics in their skin? This helps the porcupine heal after it falls out of a tree trying to reach for tender buds to eat and is poked with its own quills. Desert box turtles eat small insects and plants. They live on the edge of White Sands National Monument in the shrub. Did you know rattlesnake rattles are made up of a material called keratin, which is what your fingernails are made of? Bleach earless lizards have evolved to have a white coloration that camouflages them in the gypsum dunes. These lizards are not actually earless, but called earless because they do not have external ear openings. You can find these lizards at the dune field. They eat insects and spiders. Tarantulas live in burrows and crevices. They have large hairy bodies. 
They eat insects, reptiles, and small rodents. Tarantulas do not use a web to catch their prey. Instead, they lie and wait to ensnare their prey. The White Sands Missile Range surrounds White Sands National Park. After the bombing of Pearl Harbor during World War II, our government established the missile range here, as well as used this area as a key location for the development of the first atomic bomb. The testing of the first atomic bomb took place at the Trinity site, which is about 65 miles north of White Sands. The Trinity site is open to the public once a year and reservations are necessary in order to visit. We just finished up our visit by going inside the gift shop and also the ranger station. I didn't have them before, but I want to show you the National Park booklets. Um, we got here super early because it gets hot in the summer, so um, we didn't, it, they weren't open yet. Uh, this is the Pre-K Junior Ranger Activity Booklet for White Sands, and this is the one for ages six and up. So make sure you do them so that you can get a badge. And then of course, you know, I always have to check out their goodies. And I found a baby javelina and a little white cottontail rabbit, but they have so many other beautiful puppets and stuffies. Um, I also got an easy field guide to common mammals of New Mexico. We're gonna do a bunch of national parks here. I also learned that White Sands has now gotten a different designation. It's no longer a national monument, like I've been saying this whole time for this video, but it's actually now a national park. So, correction on that one. I also got Nature Timeline sticker book. This goes because there were um, mastodons and mammoths and smilodons and giant sloths here during the Ice Age. Um, they have some really great resources for that. So you can get a timeline. This opens up and it's kind of like really great evolutionary biology activity. It comes with stickers that you put on the timeline for each of the different eras. You know I have a huge collection of books, but I've never seen this book. This is Mega Meltdown, and it goes through all of the animals of the Ice Age. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful illustrations, and um, really thorough. I hope you'll join me again soon for another National Park adventure. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss another virtual field trip with me. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.